human being having the right to defend their, their lives and their country and their property and dignity. These facets right here. That all human beings have the right that if anyone tries to kill other human beings or to expel them from their land, they have the right to physically resist and to fight back. Now, in the Quran and in the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, uh, modern day uh, political scientists refer to this as just war, but we have rules of just war and engagement in Islam that go back centuries. This goes back centuries. Firstly, the Quran says, fight those who fight against you. Fight those that fight against you. But when they come towards peace, immediately make peace. You have to stop right there. When it's time to make peace, you make peace. In the rules of engagement, the Prophet Muhammad explicitly said, no woman can be attacked, no children, no elderly, no workers in the field. Now, in, in modern day terms, we have to put that thing about not fighting women to the side. Because in modern day armies, women carry AK-47s, they fly Black Hawk helicopters, they fly M-16s, they throw grenades. Even Qaddafi's, Qaddafi's bodyguards, in Qaddafi's army, he has women. In this case, those are enemy combatants that can be fought. Their status of being not being fought against is thrown out. Also, scorched earth policy, scorched earth warfare is forbidden in Islam. The Prophet Muhammad himself said there can be no unnecessary cutting down of trees, no burning of crops, and no killing of live livestock. And this is why Islamic scholars basically almost unanimously have said that nuclear weapons in the Islamic faith are haram. They are forbidden. Because a nuclear weapon will not only kill non-combatants, it will pollute the environment. This is part of the misinformation we've heard in the media, and I don't like a lot of what uh, I've heard from the, uh, the Iranian regime at various times. But the founder of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Ayatollah El Khomeini, put out a fatwa calling nuclear weapons the tools of the shaitan, the tools of the devil, of the Satan. And his successor said that. Uh, this is what they said openly. And most Islamic scholars would agree with this, uh, this opinion, that nuclear weapons are basically the weapons of the devil. Now, Pakistan has nuclear weapons as a Muslim-majority country, but uh, Pakistan is a, uh, a system that is primarily not based upon Islam, but has a governmental structure formed or structured after British governmental system because the British were the ones that colonialized Pakistan. So this is the, the, the outward jihad. Also, another verse in the Quran gives permission that if oppressed people, it doesn't matter whether they're Muslim or not Muslim, come to the Islamic government, the Islamic state, and ask for help because they're being oppressed. And if the ruler or the leader of the Muslims um, analyzes it, he can call for jihad to, ass to assist those people who are being oppressed, as long as there's no treaties between the other party. Now, jihad cannot be called, we, we have, in the, in the outward jihad, we have the, a, a jihad of necessity, and then there's a, a jihad that has to be command, commanded. So as I, as I said, if anyone's coming to try to kill me, or kill you, or someone just kill you, you have the intrinsic right, you have the natural right given you by God to defend yourself. Now, if it comes to attacking other nations, no one single individual Muslim has the right to proclaim jihad. Jihad has to be called by the leader of the state. So, for example, uh, Osama bin Laden is dead, his successor, Ayman al Dawahiri. Even if he was right in what he was teaching, which he's not, he's a terrorist, but let's say he was right in, in calling for a so-called uh, jihad. 
he's not even eligible because he's not a leader of a state. Like, um, uh, like our president uh, calls for military action against another country. Uh, a general or a private in the army, or myself as a citizen, I don't have that authority to call on another nation, another group of people to be attacked. The president's the one who has that authority in, in, in our country. Uh, and, and we have, well, you're talking about war, but no one has gone by that Powers of War Act, and I know it was instituted. Congress is, is the one that's supposed to uh, call for a war after 90 days of a, uh, a military action in a particular country. And our president's trying to get around that because he said no ground troops were sitting in Libya. But that's a whole other discussion. I don't agree with that, by the way, I'm just letting you know about the, the whole thing in Libya and what's going on. But, <clears throat> um, so that's outward jihad. Let me make one other point. The Quran says very explicitly, uh, don't kill yourselves. So the Islamic scholars most say, now, not only can you not kill innocent people, it's not permissible for a Muslim to go into a market or go into a church or go into a mosque and blow themselves up. That's terrorism. And about 80 to 85 percent of victims of extremists are Muslims themselves because when you look at what's going on TV in Pakistan and Afghanistan or in Somalia, you see these suicide bombings taking place. Or the majority of people who are getting blown up uh, are Muslims being blown up by extremists. And this is and this is a fact. This is empirical. And that's a, it's not a statistic I'm making up. Now, there's a second jihad called the jihad al shaitan It's the jihad against the devil. It's the jihad against the devil, the struggle against the devil. This is a jihad that's not physical, per se. This is a jihad against the influences of the devil in society that when certain things that are immoral or promote lewd and lascivious behavior, that the believer in God is supposed to put forth the intellectual, moral, and spiritual resistance to that thing that is not spiritual and that is uh, lewd and lascivious and antisocial. So, for instance, I know that this is acceptable and meant amongst many people in American society, but in Islam, marriage is only between a man and a woman. Not a man, a man, or a woman, or a woman. So, if Per chance, some people try to come to the state of Michigan to make same-sex marriage legal. Then, if myself as a Muslim would get with someone who's a Christian who also believes that shouldn't be passed, we would be involved in a jihad against same-sex marriage being made legal in Michigan because that goes against our fundamental values of family life. Does and I don't make any apologies about that. That's, that's the basic Islamic belief. We have the story of Lot in the Quran and what happened to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. We don't make any apologies for that. The third jihad is the greatest jihad, or majahid, uh, uh, majahid. It's the greatest jihad. It's a. Let me let me go back first to a story and this will help give you an explanation. Back in the old days, 14 centuries ago, with Muhammad, the prophet, and his companions, uh, for over a decade, the community was involved in nonviolent resistance when they were in the city of Mecca. They were the minority, and they were driven out of the city of Mecca, some of them tortured and killed. But those who were able to escape went to the city of Medina. And then God gave permission for Muslims to fight to defend themselves after having a siege being laid upon them. After one of these battles, Muhammad the Prophet said to his companions, they won a 